Hey guys, this is Materi, and this is the seventh video in my sound design tutorial. And we're going to be making some sounds. Um, if you've been watching, you should know what everything does, and you should already have a pretty good idea of how to make those sounds that you hear in your head just by putting everything that you know um, together. But um, I'm going to be going over some basic sounds and some more advanced sounds in these upcoming videos. So the first sound that I think will be um, the easiest to start off with will be just like a sub bass. So you need like headphones or, or a sub to actually hear like what I'm going to be doing. So let's think about how sub basses sound. Sub basses are low. They go under 100 hertz. <clears throat> they sound smooth most of the time. They're not like crunchy sounding, not distorted, just nice and smooth to fill out the bottom um, frequencies to make your song sound full. So with that in mind, we know that a, uh, hold on. We know that sine waves are smooth. Square waves are really, really harsh. Sawtooth waves are also really harsh. And then triangle waves are a little harsh, but they're a little bit more smooth than square waves and sawtooth waves. So with that in mind, if we want a smooth sound, we could use a sine wave, or if we want a little bit more edge to it, we can use the triangle wave. And in Massive, there is a triangle sine um, wavetable, which is really nice. Well, first of all, let's a uh, new sound, and then the uh, sine triangle. And now what we know about wavetables is that if we put it in the middle, it'll be like half of a triangle, half of a sine wave. And we probably have a good sound right now. And if you listen to it, it has a little edge to it, but it's still smooth. And uh, right now, if you see at the bottom of Ableton, if you're using Ableton, it tells us our key. We're at C3, like our current range of keys. We're at C3, so that's a C3. And we could just drop this three octaves to negative 36. Yeah, if you can hear that, you can hear like the click when you play. So to get rid of clicks is really simple. That's just uh, the attack is uh, too short. So if we bump the attack a little bit. And maybe the release. If we put those up, you could already hear it sounds smoother. Let's route this to filter one for now. And before we do that, let's go into our voicings tab. Uh, one thing about subs is that they're really supposed to be um, narrow. They're not supposed to sound wide. So we're not gonna wanna put our unison up because that'll make it sound more wide. Another thing is that we don't wanna be able to play chords with this sound because it just sounds weird, like listen. Have you ever heard of sub bass play chords? No. So we can put it on monophonic and put it on always, just so we slide every time. And we could actually put that glide time down. Yeah, sweet. Now, 
for our filter, since we don't have any highs anyway, we're going to want to do either a low pass or a daft. I always do daft. It's Daft just seems to like bump certain frequencies. So we can leave everything at the default location. And it already sounds really good. And if we go to our EQ, we can bump up the low shelf a little bit and just take down the uh, high shelf. And with the boost, we can find that resonance. And just take it off. But let's see. We can just take down the resonance on the daft actually. Put a little up. So we have a little bit of that like resonance buzz sound. Now I usually like trying to get the level of massive all the way to the top but not clipping. So as close as I can to the red without actually hitting the red. Sweet. And there we go. We have a nice sub bass that we can use in any track. And even though we have a um, low pass on it, a daft filter, which is pretty much a low pass, we would want to put an EQ on it and just just uh, cut off all the frequencies higher than what it's going to be playing. And usually my sub bass is this low. So I just cut it around 100, 90, between 90 and 100 um, hertz is usually where I do a cut. And that's just to clean up the mix so you don't get any of those stray highs um, muddying up your mix. So that's how you make a sub bass. And in the next video, these sound videos are going to be a little shorter. Um, I guess I'll be going over some other sound, probably a lead. And after that, maybe pads or something. Just trying to get like a general idea of uh, how to make certain sounds and maybe I'll go over more getting that sound out of your head. So thanks for watching. Watch the next video. More uh, sound design like uh, exercises, I guess we could call them. So again, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Watch the next video. And goodbye.